Um, <clears throat> let's talk about something else. Say why? Yeah. I know you are religious in that you're a Christian. Yeah. Let's talk about religion. Yeah. How has that shaped your life, and how does that affect our society today? You know, when I say our society, I want to use Nigeria typically as um, a focal point. Okay. Now, what role do you think religion is playing in that society? And what role did your religion play in your life? So I'm a Christian, like you rightly <laughs> said. You see, everything we've said so far has been influenced by my religious beliefs. It's shaped my view of life. Let me start by saying, God created the heavens and the earth, right? Mm -hmm. Can you see the order in, in nature? The whole idea of science is discovering those order, those kind of things that God has put there. That's all we do in science. We discover, you know, that regularities in the so-called chaos. That is the whole idea. If you look at the Bible, it says it brings you from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. light. Ignorance is not light. Mm -hmm. So, for me, religion is very, very big. Uh, it's the biggest part of me in the sense that it's shaped my worldview. It's shaped the way I see life. And it's, I've been involving over time. The more I, I read the Bible, understand it, it shapes the way I see life. I, mm -hmm. I'm a different person from what I was many years ago. That's good. Now, I, but I do have a problem with religion in Nigeria because I feel uh, religion unfortunately seems to promote some level of ignorance, which is rather strange. Especially, is that a problem? Because there's a reason I asked you this question, yeah. and we'll get into that now. Yeah. Is that a problem with religion, or is that a problem with the interpretation, the current interpretation of Of course. Us? It isn't the religion itself, it's the Bible. Mm -hmm. That's what people like uh, Michael Faraday and all these great guys read, mm -hmm. and they began to do physics and everything. And do what they did. Because they realized there's But the people we have today in that society interpreting it, are interpreting it such a way that they they put you under bondage and so, they skew it to benefit them. So what we've done in Nigeria is mix them. Um, and I'm speaking Tradition with religion. Exactly. And I'm speaking because I can't speak for other religion. Because I I mean, I can speak on it, but I won't want to. Yeah. But from Christianity that I've seen, I, I, I take your spot on, is we've mixed Christianity with... I mean, it doesn't, sometimes it doesn't make sense to me. Yes, yes, there's a mixture of multiple things, not just tradition. Yes, yes, tradition. There's mysticism, there's, there's everything. Um, hypocrisy. <laughs> oh, you have quite there's a lot of that. A lot of them all mixed up together. Because and again, again, when you mix things like that, you it's no longer effective. So people are no longer learning it, what it's, they it's, should learn. It's not just that it's not effective, it's that it's destructive. Good point. And that's the problem with that. That's why Nigeria is having the problem. We are one of the most religious people in the world. The Bible yes, is absolutely the, the a, most a, evil group of people yeah. also exist there. The Bible is this; it's been there for thousands of years now. I would say, fantastic book, wonderful book, inspirational, life changing. The greatest book I have ever read. The greatest personally. book in the world left to me is the greatest. The There's greatest like book that. ever I've read. But then we read this every Sunday and Tuesday, and we have VGs. Every Zero day. impact. And we don't have. Then there's pro, there's a problem, right? Because that means it's like what the Bible says: they have a form of godliness. I think it's Timothy, 2 Timothy, maybe 1, 5 or 3, 5. It says they have a form of godliness, but they deny the real power from such turn away. So the Bible recognizes that. People have all the emotions of religion, but the real thing is just missing. Hmm. It was like the Pharisees. When you read the Bible and you read about some of these old Pharisees, it's mm -hmm. exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Very religious people, but they had nothing. They were... You could also use the word hypocrites. Yeah, that's why Jesus always challenged them and say, you hypocrites. You know, mm -hmm. you always had that problem with them. Absolutely. You always challenge them as hypocrites. Hypocrites, yep. That's exactly what's happening in Nigeria. And we've turned it into a culture. We've, um, we, we celebrate it. We glorify it. We seem to be comfortable with it. Is there a way out of it? Light. It's always the answer to Where that is place. that light going to come from? Education. Because the people, yeah, <laughs> we, we thought we were supposed to be the light are actually the source of the darkness at the moment. Yes, so it's it's a bit tricky, but one I think when it comes to religion, we must be we must be truth seekers, because when you start to seek the truth, one thing I found out is the moment you start to seek the truth, uh, and you are very humble, God will always help you. That's what mm -hmm. I believe. 
And it's, it's, you know, I always say light is the answer to darkness. For example, a lot of problems in Have you noticed that we have a very inefficient system in Nigeria? Okay. And you, yeah. that's why people can make a lot of money in Nigeria because it's inefficient. Mm -hmm. You see, when you go to a country that is efficient, to make money, you have to think a lot you more. Think a lot more. <laughs> because every opportunity somebody is thinking about. It's saturated. And it's the same thing with the churches. A lot of things are in the shadow, in the dark. If you shine light on them, there's nowhere to hide. And I believe that we need that. Well, but that's the problem. When you shine the light on them, yeah. Yeah, you will think that the people you're trying to help them see, the yeah. things hidden in the shadows and in the dark, will be liberated and will accept the light. No, yeah, so they go about defending the darkness. So the, <laughs> That's correct. Two ways, when you shine that light, people are seeking the truth, we always respond. But not many people seek the truth. Don't forget, not many people seek the truth. Mm. The other people are genuinely deceived. And so they defend, but they don't hold longer. The more you shine the light, and they realize that what they are defending cannot hold, they start to drop it. The people blankly refuse to join you are people that don't want the truth. You know, Jesus said, um, the light has come into the world and people, I can't remember how to quote it, but they reject it because they love darkness more than mm -hmm. light. So there are people who love darkness, they don't want it to change that. Except God changes them, there's really nothing you can do with that. I won't waste my time with those. <laughs> but the people who want the truth is the people you can go for. And, and they don't have to be too much before you start to change the whole system. We just have to be strategic about it. That's mm. all. That's where. That's interesting. Thank you. Thank you for that answer. Um, in case you missed the beginning, we were speaking to Ayo, um, a doctor who graduated um, with his um, PhD here in Leicester University. We did our masters together in Leicester University here together together in the UK, and um, we're honoured to have him here today, throwing lights on um, different things.